NC State sees this line moving, so they know that the country thinks that Tennessee's going to blow NC State out. This is also their Super Bowl uh, by Josh Pate. At least he said that. I don't know if he really believes that. Nevertheless, let me ask you this. Is there a chance that Tennessee could overlook a ranked team in NC State? No, I don't think so. I think that uh, they had a lot of offseason preparation toward NC State instead of Chattanooga. They knew Chattanooga would be like a glorified scrimmage. And I don't think they'll overlook the ranked team. I don't think they'll overlook a team that's got a quarterback that's known for over 10,000 yards, rushed for over 1,100 yards. I don't think they'll overlook a receiver, Kevin Concepcion, who I think was the best freshman receiver in the nation last year. I think Tennessee will be – has been and will be very respectful of NC State. I do not think they will overlook them. Doesn't mean they'll play great, but I don't think it'll be because they're looking past them to that powerhouse called Kent State. Oh, that's true. Um, I'm going to add to that, and then, Caleb, I'm going to put you in the devil's uh, advocate role. Um, and I, I, from talking to Cooper in our ball report, brought to you by City Heating and Air Conditioning yesterday, he seemed very respectful of NC State as well. So, Caleb, how would you argue otherwise, or can you, or do you even believe as much? Caleb, are you there, sir? Oh, my gosh. A rookie mistake, Mike muted. (laughs) Oh, Um, did you rookie mistake this thing? I rookie mistake it. I know that. I rookie mistaked it. Um, Let's hope that Tennessee's young secondary doesn't rookie mistake it the way I just did tomorrow. Um, So, all right, Jimmy. Let me float this out to you because I, I want to play off the poll question and the way I worded it on our message board. Because the poll question I set up was, will Tennessee overlook NC State? But no, not with Josh Heifel. Yes, they need to be careful. But what do you make of this one? What if the real answer is, who cares? NC State has no shot anyway. Do you think it matters even if Tennessee does overlook NC State? Is NC State just not good enough to compete? I think it matters. Uh, I, I do. I'm reminded of this, and I'm going to go way back, but I'm reminded of, and this will be from Tennessee's end of it. I remember back in 1989, Tennessee opened the season against Colorado State. They won 17-14. to I think they had to block a punt to help win the game. I'm watching that team and think, boy, they stink. They're not any good. Now they're going out to play a six-ranked UCLA team the next week, and you know what? Tennessee blew out UCLA. I don't think the NC State team that we saw against Western Carolina is anything like what they really are. I think they overlooked Western Carolina and I would not be fooled by their ineffective performance. Do I think Tennessee is going to win the game? Absolutely. I do. But I think if Tennessee goes in thinking this is just another cupcake, we can roll out the ball. They could get beat. So I I think Tennessee has to play well to win the game. I think they will, but I'll go back to this. I don't think that NC state team that you saw is anything like what they can be. They also, that's a team that won nine games a year ago. It's a team that a year ago beat Miami, uh, it beat Clemson, it beat North Carolina. This is a good program that Dave Doran has. So I, I don't I don't think Tennessee will overlook them, but if they do, they could get beat. Jimmy, did you learn anything about Tennessee from the Chattanooga game that you didn't know? Because they were playing a bunch of guys like Caleb. Uh, <laughs> I, I Come didn't on, learn Dave. A, well. I can't say I learned this, but I thought Nico was was incredibly accurate. I didn't chart this, but Pro Football Focus had him 14 of 14 on over the middle and had him four and four on deep middle routes. Those were routes that Joe Milton had trouble connecting on. So his I thought his accuracy was incredible. Now, I'll I'll argue with one of their over the middle incompletions. He threw a bad pass to score white that was incomplete. I don't know how they missed that. But I thought his accuracy was great. He hit people in stride. Didn't they have like one drive where he threw a 23-yard and a 36-yarder? Boom, boom, touchdown. So, yeah, that that was extraordinary. That's really good against air. Otherwise, I didn't learn a whole lot. Dylan Sampson ran about like I thought. Heck, James Pierce, I I was wondering, why didn't he still show up on the stat sheet? And I think he had, what, 10 or 12 snaps in the whole game? Mm-hmm. So, they played so many people on defense, but I can't say I learned much of anything in, in such a one-sided victory over Chattanooga. 
Jimmy, you bring up James Pierce playing 10 or 12 snaps and they pull Nico at halftime, which typically mm-hmm. Josh Heupel pulls in the third quarter, not really right. halftime. Does, does that serve as more evidence that they're not overlooking NC State because he was trying to save as much as possible for NC State and wanted to be as vanilla as possible against Chattanooga? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I, I think that's a part of it. I, uh, here's the other thing, too. If I'm Josh Heupel, and I understand this is a neutral site game, but if I'm Josh Heupel, I'm reminding this team, you know what? When you played at Florida last year, you laid an egg. When you went on the road at Missouri, you laid an egg. Two years ago at South Carolina, laid an egg. So when they go on the road, I think that a point can be made, you better not overlook anybody because you've played poorly in three different occasions on the road in the last two years. And so you're going on the road again, and you better be focused. So I, I, I would play that card if I were Josh Heupel. Jimmy, I think they're super focused, and we'll see um, what happens on Saturday. I think they're super focused for the entire season. And I'm going to lay a theory out here. And, guys, if you want to rip me on the message board, you're welcome to. But this is what I believe. I, Caleb I, I, rip you? Yeah, Caleb will rip me. Everybody will rip me. It's just a <laughs> rip fest. I, I, I don't believe this team believed in Joe Milton last year. Uh, during the season, one player said to me off the cuff, as no, it's nobody that we worked with. So you don't, it's not Jacob Warren or Cooper Mays. But somebody said it doesn't really matter if you can throw it 80 yards if the guy's at 60. Uh, and no, I said that, by the way. Yeah, we all <laughs> did. Ahead. We all did. But <laughs> for a player to say that, I think they knew that there was a glass ceiling last year, that when it came down to it, they weren't going to be able to beat the elite because they didn't have the elite quarterback. And I think there was always a self doubt. I don't think there's any self-doubt with Nico. Am I reaching there? Well, I I can't dispute that there was a player that told you that. Now, did he speak for the rest of the team, or was he the lone wolf? I thought that Joe Milton had the locker room. I think that's why, one reason why, Heupel didn't bench him in favor of Nico. Right. Because there were so many players that I thought supported Milton. So – uh, was there some angst about his uh, accuracy? Maybe a little bit, but I don't know if I felt like the players thought there was a ceiling with him. And I'll go back to something else, too, and I was fooled by this a little bit, and I'll argue with some other people about it. I thought Milton played well against Clemson. And somebody said, well, but they had some three and outs. Well, yeah, Clemson had a very good defense. Of course they had some three and outs. But you know what? They scored 31 points. But – if I'm not mistaken, there were what? Were there six games, at least five games last year, where they didn't score more than 21? Right. So I, when I saw Milton against Clemson, I thought, okay, he's been in the system long enough. He's going to have a really good year for Tennessee. And I was wrong. He was too inconsistent. He was too inaccurate. Uh, I'm not surprised he made a roster because he can throw it 80 yards or, or further. But And, and the NFL is enamored with that too. But I don't think he'll ever be a starter in the NFL. I think he'll be a guy that just makes a roster. And I would agree with what you said. I think he had the locker room. I think he was liked. I just don't know that he was believed in. I think people Mm. hoped for him. And this was at the beginning of the year last year. I think they hoped and they believed and he was a nice guy. Or they didn't believe. They hoped and liked, but they didn't believe. Caleb, But that's the best way I could phrase it. And I think they have total belief in Nico to take them to stratospheric heights. Well, this guys is why twenty twenty. This is why twenty twenty three was the most difficult coaching job for Josh Heupel. It wasn't just dealing with the quarterback that wasn't fit for his system. But I've said from the start, Jimmy, that Heupel put all his eggs into the basket of being successful in twenty twenty four. But to get to twenty twenty four after the twenty twenty two season, he had to keep the team together and stay above water, at least respectable. Prove that he still has a solid program in twenty twenty three. Which eight and four, nine and four, you can do that. That's that's enough. That's bare minimum. But he did hit bare minimum. I mean, because let's be honest, once you start getting to eight and five, seven and six, you're getting more concerned. But nine and four is bare minimum. And I think that he had to keep the team together while doing that. And he had to do all that with a quarterback that was just not a fit for his system. And I think his whole thought of last year was, if I can just get through this year, if I can just get past this year and get into 2024 with Nico Iamaliava and keeping this team together and nobody turning against me because of Joe Milton or anything like that, we'll be ready to go in 2024. And I think he pulled that off. Let me uh, let me throw a couple of hypotheticals at you. Number one, when did Hypo realize Joe Milton wasn't a fit for the system? 
At what point? September. Well, oh, I think it was off the I think, uh, Yeah, I mean, I think he realized at some point in September he wasn't a gamer and that he was kind of inaccurate in practice, but he was really inaccurate in games. All right. And the other September thing is, if, if Hypo had said with maybe four or five games left, he goes to Nico against, I don't know, starting with the Missouri game, how do you think the team would have responded? Even though Milton had the locker room, do you think there would have been a revolt? Or do you think Nico would have played so well, the players like, okay, we get it. Because I remember a few years ago at Clemson, didn't they have a quarterback named Kelly Bryant? Mm-hmm. And about halfway through the year, they benched him. And he was a guy that was popular with his teammates. But, oh, this Trevor Lawrence guy was something special. I just wonder if Tennessee had gone with Nico with four or five games left, if, if any of the players would have revolted. Um, yeah, to the point, you might have had some guys – I mean, they had a lot of transfers, but you might have had some guys say, I'm not going to take that NIL money uh, from Tennessee. I'm going to go somewhere else because it seems to be in flux at the quarterback position, or I'm going to go on to the NFL. I mean, Cooper Mays could have done that. Yeah, I think there's – I would say this, Jimmy. I think there was about a 25% chance or less that you could have lost the locker room. I, I believe I believe they would have backed the better player. But what you say is – is very applicable. Well, well, Trevor Lawrence won the locker room because of how good he was. Right. Nico might have won it just like that if he had performed very well right away. And by the way, I think he would have performed very well right away. Yeah. Uh, Can Jimmy's I throw Mar- out? Yes, go. Is it also Kelly Bryant was a little bit younger I, than Joe Milton was? I think a part yeah. of this was a everybody was. Thing. Yeah, that's true. (laughs) The reason I think it would have been even trickier, and I'm going to be honest, this is a weird thing, but there's a sentimental side for some players and just some people. It was for Kelly Bryant. It's like, okay, he got benched, but he can transfer. He can go to Missouri. He'll be able to play for Joe Milton. This was his last year. And I think there may have been a few people that felt really, really bad for him seeing him bench his last year, his last chance to make an impact. And then he stuck it out. He stayed here when he... Yeah. yeah. But Well, the the flip side is you didn't have the transfer portal back then, so... I mean, you had a city year, so I think people dislike that as well. I find it interesting, Jimmy, that you think it would have gone well had it been Nico with about a month left in the season because I do too. 